Welcome into the video. If you are new to the Samsung Galaxy S23 and you're looking for a beginner's walkthrough to learn all the basics, you've come to the right place. Let's get into the video and I'm gonna teach you everything you'll need to know to use your new Samsung Galaxy S23. This will be a full beginner's walkthrough and we'll be going over all the basic things you'll need to know to get you up to speed in using this phone. So we're gonna go over first a walkthrough of the phone so you can see all the buttons, how to navigate the screen. Then we'll go over how to download apps and games. From then we'll move on to how to make calls, how to send text messages. From there we'll then transition into how to sign into your email account so you can get all your messages on the phone. And then we'll close out the video with how to use the camera and also how to find your pictures after you've taken them. So that is our kind of rundown of what we'll be covering in the video. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. And before we get started, I just want to point out one thing, one really recommendation really. Um, you may have noticed when you bought your phone that it did not come with a wall charger, which is frustrating because obviously you'll want to be able to charge your phone. Everyone doesn't have a type C wall type charger at home. So I just wanted to throw a recommendation out there for this charger here. It's by anchor. Um, this is a quick charge charger that will support the cable that came in the box. It also has a full size USB port as well. So you can charge your other devices. Uh, on this at the same time. Very reasonably priced, it's under $35, and uh, it's a great companion piece, I'll say, for you to get, to, get for your phone. Um, if you're looking to spend a little bit less, Anchor also makes what's called their Nano Charger, and it's just a Type-C charger. It does support quick charge as well, and again, this will work with the cable in the box. So if you haven't already purchased a charger for your phone, I would encourage you to get one of those, and I'll have the links in the comment section and in the description below. Um, do not use cheap chargers. Make sure you buy a quality charger so that you don't mess up your new phone. All right, let's go ahead and jump in, and let's start with our walkthrough. So starting with our exterior buttons, there won't be any buttons on the left side of the phone. The left side is totally blank. On the right side, you'll find your volume up, volume down, and a power, uh, power button slash standby button. There's nothing at the top of the phone. But on the bottom, you will find your SIM card tray right here, and you will find your Type-C connection right here. Now, one important note in case you didn't know, this phone does not have a micro USB, or excuse me, the phone does not have a micro SD slot. It will not accept uh, external memory cards. You can only use the internal storage, all right? Now, on the right side here, we're gonna tap that power button, and tapping that is gonna wake up the phone. Tapping it again will put the phone asleep. The phone is still on, it's just asleep. So tapping it once will take you to um, this lock screen. And to unlock the phone, simply take your finger, put it on the screen and just drag your finger across the screen. And that's how you unlock the phone, just a drag across the screen. Now, if you ever would like to turn the phone off or restart it, swiping down from the top of the screen, swiping down again, and you'll see a power button right here, right next to the magnifying glass. If you tap on that power button, it will take you to the menu here that will allow you to either power the phone off, it will allow you to restart the phone or to put the phone in the emergency call mode, all right? And one important little tweak that will probably be helpful to you, if you tap on side key settings, um, you can change your power button so you can launch this menu from the power button. So where it says press and hold uh, in the middle here, tap on power off menu and then tap the home button here. And so now if I hold down on the power button, it will also launch the menu that will allow you to power the phone off, restart the phone, or go into an emergency call. So just one little tip. As I see little tips I think will be valuable, I'll throw those out there just to help you, again, be as educated as possible and have a smooth experience in terms of using the phone. So that was the process of, or excuse me, those were the exterior buttons, and that's how you power the phone off. Next, we're gonna go over the buttons on the screen and how to navigate the phone. So on the bottom of the phone here, you'll find three buttons, a uh, recent apps button, home button, 
and a back button. Let's walk through what these three buttons do, starting with the home button. Simply put, pressing the home button will take you back to this screen, which is called the home screen. So no matter what you're doing, let's say you tap on one of these little icons by accident, if you'd like to get back to the home screen, all you need to do is tap on the home button. And that's it. And now we're back to the main screen, okay? Um, no matter what you're doing, that button always takes you right back to your home base. So that's the easiest way to think of it. Now, on the left here, you have what is called your recent apps button. So let's quickly talk about what are apps. So apps is short for applications. Think of it like a computer. Computers use programs, phones use applications, or apps for short. So when you hear me use the term apps, I'm just referring to these little icons, which are the programs of the phone. And obviously later in the video, I'll walk you through how to download those different applications and where to find them on the phone, all those important uh, details. So don't worry, we'll go over all that later on in the video. So let's say I open up one of these little apps and again, this app here, this is your internet, uh, also known as Google Chrome. So if I tap on the Chrome app, it's gonna take me to the internet where I can then um, tap in the search box here and I can do a quick search for something on the internet. You could type in, for example, weather, in case you wanted to know what the weather is in your city. And just by tapping in weather, it actually will show you right here. So I'm on the internet, I'm doing a search, and I wanna go back to my home screen. I'm gonna hit my home button. It takes me back home. But one important thing to note is that because I've hit the home button, that doesn't close out the page I was looking at in the Chrome app. That page is still open. And so if I wanna get back to that page quickly, I would tap on my recent apps button right here. Now this will show me a list of all the apps I was just using. So I could easily get back to an app or a program I was using previously just by tapping that button and then tapping on the app. So that quickly, now I'm back at the Chrome page and I'm able to search the internet. Now, if you would like to close out those apps after you finish using them, all you need to do is hit that recent apps button and then swipe up. So put your finger on screen and make a swiping up gesture. So uh, basically dragging your finger up the screen like this. And that's how you close out uh, the applications. And if you want to close everything, you obviously have a button here called close all. And this button will close all the apps in one swoop. Now if I hit the recent apps button again, it'll say you have no recently used apps. So that's just a, um, again, a quick shortcut to get back to things you were working on and also close out things that could be running. Now, let's move on to our back button. Now using the back button, um, it, it's used across a lot of different functions on the phone. Let me show you one common example. Let's say we were to go to the settings. So I'm in the settings and let's say I were to select a couple of different options. I've gone deeper into the menu now if I'd like to go back one step, I'm going to hit the back button one time and then I'm going to hit the back button again and this will keep taking me back one page. That's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step. It's a really um, easy way to navigate um, the different apps and uh, right now I'm on the main screen of the settings page and if I'd like to, if I hit the back button again, it's going to take me out of the app altogether. So simply put, it just takes you back one step. So these are the three buttons that you'll be using to do a lot of the navigating or moving around of the phone and um, you should have kind of a basic understanding after what I've just covered. Now next, let's talk about what is called the notification panel. Now if you take your finger and you start at the top of the screen and you just drag it down the screen, it will bring up what is called the notification panel. And this is where you'll find two things. You'll find uh, what are called switches. These are shortcuts to different um, important settings that people use on the phone. And you'll find notifications from your different applications. So for example, if you were to download Facebook and sign in, if someone sends you a message, it'll actually pop up in this section and that's how you'll know you have a message. It'll show up in this um, area right here. So 
All it does is it's like your communication center. Every time uh, you get a text message or uh, a call or an email, um, it's gonna show up in this section to keep you updated with uh, what is coming through your phone, what communication is there. And so for example, I have this communication from Google One, so if I tap on it, it'll take me right to that application and then I can read whatever the message is and get more information. So that's really all that happens in this section of the notification panel. Now this section is a little more important and I wanna spend a little bit more time explaining this. So at the top of the screen here, these little switches that are shortcuts to just different settings on the phone. So let's start with uh, this button all the way to the left here. This is your Wi-Fi switch. And so if it's lit up blue, it means that your phone is, uh, your Wi-Fi is turned on and you're able to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So right now it's grayed out, which means that Wi-Fi is turned off. So if you want to turn on Wi-Fi, all you have to do is tap on that icon just like that. It will light up and now we'll begin to look for a Wi-Fi signal. Now, if you're, let's just say you're out at a restaurant or you're at someone's house and you're trying to connect to their Wi-Fi network, you wanna take your finger and just hold down on the button for one second like this. That will take you to the Wi-Fi um, page in the settings and it will basically set you up for the easiest connection. So right here, we'll see all the available networks. And you'll simply need to find out what is the name of the network you're trying to connect to. If you're at Starbucks, the network is probably called Starbucks. But if you're at a friend's house, it could be named Netgear 52, for example. So say, hey, what's your Wi-Fi uh, name and password? Let's just say it's Netgear 52. You're gonna tap on that, and then the keyboard will come up and you'll just enter the password and when you're done, you'll hit connect, and then it will connect to that network. So that is really the whole process for you to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Now, we swipe down again, you'll find some other options here. This is your uh, sound um, switch, which is super important. Right now, because you see a slash over this icon, it means that the phone is on uh, vibrate. Now, if I tap it again, this means that the phone is on mute. So um, basically, or excuse me, it's on silent. So it means uh, if you get a call or a text, the phone is not gonna vibrate, it's not gonna make any sounds. And if I tap it again, now the sound is totally on. So if a call comes through, the phone will ring loudly and it will vibrate as well. So this is how you toggle through putting the phone on vibrate, silent, and then volume. Super important thing to note there. Next, we have our Bluetooth switch. Once again, if it's lit up in blue, it means that your Bluetooth is turned on. And let's say you had a Bluetooth headset or a speaker and you wanted to connect to it. Just like Wi-Fi, we're gonna put our finger on it for one second and it will take you to the Bluetooth menu. And here we can see all the devices that are uh, in Bluetooth range that you can connect to. So for example, if you had a Bluetooth speaker, you would now need to go to your Bluetooth speaker and uh, check the settings and put it into pairing mode. So now your speaker is broadcasting that it's Bluetooth signal. You know your Bluetooth on your phone is on. And then you'll need to tap the scan button here and it will begin to look for all the compatible devices that you could connect to. And then once you find one, you'll simply tap on it and it'll connect. It usually won't ask for a password, but every so often it will, just FYI. Okay, so those are probably the, the, the most important two switches up there, or most important three, I should say. Um, this is your uh, flashlight here. So this allows you to use the phone's flash as a flashlight, great right when you walk in the house and your switch isn't by the door. Now, there are more than five switches. There's just five main switches you see when you first swipe down from the top. But if I swipe a second time, it actually will bring up a lot more options here. So we'll have our hotspot screen recorder, our GPS. We have our power saving mode, which helps to um, keep your battery uh, lasting longer by restricting some of the background access on the phone. If we swipe to the left on the screen, we'll have more switches here. So quick share is um, quick share and nearby share are two different ways you can share files with people. Maybe you took some pictures and you want to send them to people around you. You can just use those options there. And you have a, a, a bunch of other cool options here. Even a QR code scanner, if you need to scan one of those QR codes, you can do it from the shortcut right here. And also to point out a few more things, you have a brightness 
uh, bar that will allow you to uh, put your finger on it and drag to the right to make the screen brighter or to the left to dim down the screen. So you can manually control your brightness from that bar and you can tap on these three dots here to turn on what is called adaptive brightness which also will basically instead of you having to control the brightness it will adjust the brightness depending on the room that you're in and how much light is in that room. So just cool important note there. Um, swiping down two times brings up these extra options, shortcut to your settings, your uh, magnifying glass, and your power button. So, so many good things you'll find um, at, in this uh, notification panel. In this next section, I'll be moving into how to make a call and how to answer the phone when someone is calling you. Now, some of you may already know how to do this, but I never like to assume. so. Um, first, I'm going to trigger a call, show you that process, and then we will have a call come through the phone so you can see what it looks like and you'll know exactly how to answer the phone. So let's tap on our phone icon in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to go to keypad and I'm going to enter uh, a phone number here. So there's a phone number, I'm typing in the area code and then the actual number. And I'm just going to tap this green button to start the call. There we go. And call is coming through. And when you see it start to count up at the top, it means that the call has connected. And um, if you hold it up to your ear, you'll be able to hear the call. If you tap on this button, the speaker, it'll broadcast it louder. You can mute your phone by tapping this here. You can connect to a Bluetooth device, maybe a Bluetooth headset by tapping this button here. If you're talking to an automated system and you have to enter a command, you can tap on keypad to bring up the different uh, numbers. And when you're all done with the call, simply hit the red button to end the call. So in a nutshell, that is the process to make a call and some of the most frequently used options on the screen. Next, let's have a call come through so we can go over how to answer the phone. So here's our call. Now. I can tap on this green button here to answer the call or tap the red button to decline. Let's tap the green button. The call has now connected and now I can start talking to the person and if I'm all done or when I'm done, I can hit the red button to end the call. Now there's different ways that calls are going to show up on the screen. That's one way and because we were in the phone app, it showed up as a pop up at the top of the screen. But if we were in a different app, then the call would look different when it comes through. And that's what I want to show you next. So the call is going to come through again, but you're going to see it come through differently. So here we go. Now it's full screen. And guess what? If I just tap this button, it's not going to answer the call for me. I have to put my finger on the button and I have to drag it across. That's how you answer a call when you see the, the whole screen taken over like that. I'm going to show you one more time so you can see it again. But again, just tapping these buttons is not going to answer or decline. You have to put your finger on the button and you have to drag your finger across for it to complete the command. So that that is how you answer and decline when the call comes through as a full pop up on the screen. All right. And that's calls in a nutshell. Next, we're going to go over text messages. Now, right next to our phone app here is our messages app and we're going to tap on it. And this is the section where you will be able to, you know, see messages that come through. You'll be able to uh, also send your own messages. So right now I just have one message here that I sent to myself and there's, there's nothing in it so far. Now you can either, uh, take a text message that has already come through and you can add to it or you can hit the button in the bottom right corner right here and this will set up a new message. Now I have all these numbers in my current contacts that so they're blurred out but uh, once you start adding contacts to the phone they will show up in this section and you can easily tap on one of these contacts. So for example if I were to tap on uh, this contact here um, it would show up on the screen and then I can tap on this blue button here to basically open up a conversation and start texting that person. So that's one way to get a conversation going. But watch this. I'm going to use my back button to get out of that. 
And now I want to hit this button again because this time I want to start a text message just using a phone number. I have someone's number, I'd like to text them. So at the top of the screen here, I can either tap where it says two. I can tap in the box here to bring up a keyboard to search for a specific person's name in my contacts, or I can tap on this keypad button here and it will bring up just my numbers and allow me to put in the phone number to send the person a text, just like this. Entering a phone number now, I'm gonna hit done, and it has opened up a new text message that I can now use to message that person. So let's tap in the box where it says text message. That'll bring up your keyboard. I'm gonna hit hi, and I'm gonna hit this button, which is your send button, and it's gonna send the message uh, forward to that person. Now, I can send words. I can tap on my little emoji button right here. Tap on that, that little um, happy face that brings up all the emojis that will allow you to then send uh, one of these little pictures. I could send, you know, uh, a smiling face, for example. I could send crying faces because I'm laughing at something. And then same thing, send button here to send it out. Now I can also tap on this plus on the left side here, or excuse me, um, there's a, a plus and right next to the plus is this little square and a, a little camera. It's kind of hard to see, but this is how you attach a picture. So I'm gonna tap on that and it will actually show me some of the pictures that I've previously taken on the phone. So let's say you just took a picture you wanna send it to someone. It should show up in this uh, little list here. Um, I could tap on this picture here and it would automatically attach it to the text. Or if I were to hit this plus, I'd have some other options. So I could send a GIF, one of those little animated pictures. I could send, uh, attach a file. Um, they have stickers. Um, I could schedule this message. Maybe you say, hey, like I actually want this. I want them to get the message tomorrow. I'm just sending it now. You can tap on schedule message and it will ask you what time do you want the message to be sent. And then you can basically get it all ready and then schedule it to be sent later. Now, one more thing. If we tap here again, the picture and the camera right next to the plus, you actually have a camera that's gonna show up in this menu and I can simply take a picture right now, attach it, and now I've just taken a picture and it's attached to the email and I can hit our send button here to send them those two pictures. So that is how you send a message and kind of some of the options that are available. And then if we hit our back button twice, it'll take us back to our main message screen and then if that person responds, then um, in fact, let me respond so you can see what a response would look like. So I'm just gonna say hi back to myself and we should see a little pop-up. There it is. Notice, so here's the pop-up on the screen. And also now this contact is in bold because it's telling me that someone just sent me a new message. So that's how you'll know that you have a new message here and I can tap on it and now I can see um, a message came through. So that's kind of text messages in a nutshell. All right, in this next section, we're gonna go over how to download applications. So you can download apps and games and, and get all the fun things you'd like to have on your phone. Um, so before I go over how to download apps, though, I wanna show you where you'll find all of the apps that are stored on the phone. So we're on the home screen now. If you'd like to get to your app drawer or the section where all the apps are, you're going to just uh, drag your finger up the screen like this, a drag up, and that'll take you to what is called your app drawer. And this holds all of the apps that are stored on the phone. So you have some folders here. This is a Google folder. If I tap on this, you'll find um, a couple of Google apps. If I tap here, you'll find some Microsoft apps. Uh, there's a Samsung folder that has quite a few apps as well. And the rest of the apps will just be in this section. So this is how you get to the, the area where you'll find all the apps that are saved on your phone. Now, to download an app, you'll be using the app called Play Store. And this is where all of the apps 
that are available are stored. Now, one disclaimer. So I just tapped on that Play Store button and it took me right into the store. For some of you, it may not have taken you there. If you don't have a Google account signed in on the phone yet, it won't take you to the store. It'll take you to a page and it will ask you to sign into your Google account. So um, if you have a Google account already, perfect. Enter your Google uh, account, your, your email address and your password, and then it will ask you to answer a few prompts. You'll simply say yes, and then it'll take you to this page. If you don't have a Google account, you've never had one, no problem. You should see an option at the bottom of the screen that's gonna say create account. And this will allow you to set up your own Google account. It takes less than five minutes. All they want is your first name, last name, your date of birth. And then they'll ask you, what do you want your email address to be? You'll create it. And then it'll move you right to this screen right here. So this is how we get here, just in case all of you are not seeing what I'm seeing right now. Okay, so now that we're here, um, downloading an app is, is a fairly easy process. Um, now, if you know what app you want, even better. So let's say I'd like to download a uh, Sudoku game. I can tap in this box. It says search for A. I'm gonna tap in the box. And by tapping in the box, it's gonna bring up a keyboard. And then I can either type in the name or start typing it and it will try to figure out what I'm typing and make recommendations. So right now I just typed in half the word and I have some suggestions. And then I tap the wrong thing. So SOD. So here's Sudoku right here. I can basically tap there and now I can get all the recommendations for great Sudoku games. Now, you don't have to type it. You can just say it by doing this. So right next to the search box is a microphone. Tap on the microphone and then say the name of the app that you'd like to download. So watch this. Uber. So this will do a voice search and then just that easy. I said Uber, it brings up the app here and all I need to do is tap on this green install button to download the app to the phone. And you'll see right here, this little circle is gonna fill up and when it fills up, that'll mean that the app has been installed successfully. And this cancel button is gonna change to a green open button. So that's what you're looking for in terms of seeing if the uh, install was successful. And usually it takes no more than a minute, maybe two minutes, depending on how big the app is. So I can tap on the green button here that says open, and now I'm in the Uber app. Now I'm gonna hit my home button and I'm gonna swipe up and go back to that app section and just show you, here is our Uber app. And every time you download a new app, it's gonna populate in this section. So that is the simple process of downloading an app and that's where you'll find it after you download it. Now I wanna show you a few more things in the store before we move on. So let's use our back button here to go back one page. And now we're back on the main page of the store. So the store is sorted by categories. So there are games, there are apps. So for example, Uber would be an app and Sudoku would be a game because you know, uh, a game is something you play and an app is more of a program. But um, either way, depending on what you're searching for, maybe you don't know what to download, you just wanna see what's available. You can come to the app section and you can scroll through, swiping up and down to see what's available. You can go to the top charts and search apps based on what's being downloaded the most. You can sort it by kids, maybe apps that are more kid friendly, or go to categories and get even more specific to a category of apps you're looking for. There is an offer section as well where you'll find uh, discounts and deals that are available in the app. And you'll have a book section where you can download eBooks, audiobooks, comic books, or you can you know, search for other uh, books in different genres. So basically kind of a digital bookstore built into the store right here. So that is the Play Store in a nutshell. In this next section, we'll be going over how to set up your email account on the phone. Now, you might have an AOL, a Yahoo, SBC Global email, and you'd like to sign into it on the phone so you can get your messages. So, here's the easiest way to do it. 
We're gonna tap on the Google folder on the home screen, and then we're gonna tap on Gmail. Now, here's the thing. The Gmail app does a lot more than what most people know. Um, yes, it will allow you to sign into your Gmail app, but you can also sign into non-Gmail email accounts like this. So let's tap on the upper right corner. You'll see a little dot. Tap on that. And then tap add another account. And here it will give you a list of all the supported email types that you can sign into with the Gmail app. So you can sign into another Google account, an Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, Exchange, or Office 360. Now you have this other option which allows you to sign in to uh, less common email types, but it can be a little tricky. So I wanna show you another trick you can use to sign to your other email types, and specifically like an AOL email address. So let's hit our home button. We're gonna go to the Play Store. Make sure we're under the Apps section. And let's get to the top of the screen here. And let's tap in the box. Now on the keyboard, tap on this button here in the, in the bottom left corner tap on the at symbol, it's the A with the circle around it, and then we're gonna tap on the ABC, and just type in AOL.com, and then I'm gonna hit the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to do a search. And what it's gonna bring up are all the apps that are compatible with this email type, and obviously the most common one being the AOL app, so I'm gonna hit this install button and download the AOL app and now I can sign in to my AOL specific email accounts much easier using the AOL app. So that's just a trick to sign into the less common email types. Now I'm gonna tap in the box here, I'm gonna erase all the words here. Another common uh, email type that um, most people wanna sign into is sbcglobal.net. So once again, bottom left corner, tap on the special characters button, the at, tap on ABC, and then let's type in SBC Global, and probably spell it right. Okay, and then we're gonna hit the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to search, and now it's gonna show us all the apps that are compatible with that email type. So this is how you can find uh, an, email, uh, an email app that will work with your email type. And it's telling us that the Yahoo app will actually work with that email type. Now, for the last step, let's go home, swipe up. I'm gonna go to the AOL app. And basically, this is what the main page will look like. You can tap in the box where it says username or email. Type in your email address at AOL.com. Hit next and then put your password in and then you'll be able to sign in to your AOL email address. So I always like to show the, the common way to set it up and then obviously I wanna show you the workaround in case that may not work for everyone. So that is email in a nutshell. Now in this next session, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video but I do wanna go over this which is how to save a contact to your phone. So if you'd like to add a number into your phone so you can call it easier, here's how you save it. We're gonna tap on the phone app. We're gonna tap on contacts. And then you'll see a little plus in the center of the screen. And this will allow you to create a new contact on the phone. So you're gonna get this pop-up. I wanna make sure to explain this properly. So. You always wanna save your contacts to your Google account. Why is that? If your phone gets stolen or lost or damaged and you can't turn it on, you won't be able to access any of the information on the phone. However, anything that's backed up to Google is saved in the cloud. So if you get a new phone and you sign into that email account, you can basically um, get all those contacts reloaded onto the new phone. So. When you see this pop up, make sure you select Google because that's gonna save a copy in the cloud as a backup in the event your phone is lost, damaged, or stolen. Now we're simply gonna enter the name of the contact. I'm gonna call it Tim. And then I'm gonna enter a phone number. So there's our number. 
And as I swipe up, I can enter other information. I can hit view more. I could put in an address, notes, a website, or any other specific info I'd like to add to it. And then I wanna hit save. Now you can also tap on this little camera and I can um, a assign a picture to his contact so when he calls, it'll always show his picture. So let's tap camera while using. And now I just want to, let's take a picture of something, press okay. And now it's gonna ask you to align the picture so that they're faced in the center, hit done and then save. And now I have a new contact named Tim and this picture will come up every time Tim calls. So that's how you save a contact to your phone. And if I wanna text Tim or if I want to call him, I can just uh, type his name instead of having to type out the whole phone number. So anyway, that's that process. And for the last section, let's go over how to use that camera, how to take videos, and then where do they get saved and how do I find them afterward. So, this is the camera icon in the bottom left, bottom right corner, excuse me. Tap on that. Now we're currently on the front camera and if you'd like to rotate to the back camera, we're gonna tap on this button here. It'll rotate to the back camera. And now I'm simply gonna point. When this button is white, it means that you're taking a picture. Let's tap. So we're taking pictures. Now, if I, on the main screen, if I just swipe over, it'll actually move me to the video section. And in the video section, that button is white with a red dot in the center. So this is how you'll know you're taking a video, not a picture. Let's tap. We're taking a little video here. If I wanna zoom in, I'm gonna hit this button here. And then I can go left here. This is how you zoom out. I can snap a picture while I'm taking a video. And when I'm all done, I'm gonna hit the button to the right here. This will stop the video from recording. Now you'll have a button to the left here that is a, pre, is a review button. I can tap this to see the very last thing I just took a picture or video of, which is super helpful. Now, if I wanna see all the pictures that I've taken on the phone, I'm gonna hit the home button, swipe up, swipe to your right, and look for the gallery icon, which is right here. And now I can see all the pictures that I just took in that gallery section. And so this first tab, pictures, is arranged in order. But if I go to albums, they'll be arranged by folders. So recently taken pictures, favorites, screenshots, messages, it'll organize the pictures based on how you've saved them. So that's basically where you'll find them. And that's it. That was our video. I wanna give a reminder about that awesome charger I shared earlier, the Anchor Charger, that um, is a great option to purchase that will work with your cable in the box and also allow you to charge your other USB devices all at the same time and it supports quick charge, definitely pick up one of these. It's gonna be super helpful for you. And also, uh, I showed you some really cool cases kind of in between the sections. Uh, if you're looking for a good quality case, I definitely recommend checking out one of those cases. We'll have a link below in the description of where you can purchase those. Um, they are affiliate links, and by you buying them there, it actually helps to support our channel. This video was created for free. I don't get paid to make the video. The money comes if you guys purchase cases and if you click on the ads and things like that. So uh, we definitely would love your support. If you found any of those cases helpful and you'd like to get one, hit those links. If, it, um, if you liked the video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. And also leave me a comment and let me know if the video was helpful. I always love to hear your feedback. And if you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. You'll also find two more helpful videos here and here. So check these out. There'll be more instructional videos on this phone specifically to help you continue to level up your knowledge on using the phone. Thanks again for watching. Take care. And as always, have a good one.